Hi guys. Um, today's sermon is called A Flawless Cross for a Flawed People. Um, I was, this morning, I was just minding my business and the Lord um, uh, brought the song Flawless by Mercy Me, um, who is a Christian band, into my heart. And um, and he said, this is your next sermon. So, so what he says, I will do. So, in a few minutes, I will, I will start um, singing that song. But first, let's pray. I'm just turning up the sound so that the video can be heard. Um, uh, so, let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for this time together, Father. And fill my mouth with your words, nothing but you. Let Rachel die in Christ, live, live. I pray, Lord God, that every spirit, every soul, every heart will be receptive to what you have to say to your people. Father, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that we receive the gift of life that you have died to give us. And Lord, I pray that, that you will just permeate each heart right now with what they need to hear. Give me what, give me something for every single person out there, Lord God. You can say the same words and it, and it can, and it does hit people differently, God. Give me a word for every single person out there. Let lives be changed and things be restored in people's lives. Let families come back together through, through this word and you are flawless cross. And I pray, Lord God, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, um, forgive me while I get myself situated uh, in front of the computer. Because what happens uh, when I have to sing it is I have to read the words from off the screen. So, right now, I have the words queued up, and but I have to pull them up, so that's what I'm doing right now. So I hope you guys are doing well. It was cold here in Toronto, Ontario. Um, yesterday, we've been having a lot of snow lately. Like, I'm, I'm talking about 15 centimeters. I don't know what that is in, in meters, but we've been getting a doozy when it comes to snow and the weather. I hope you guys are staying warm wherever you are. And I hope that, that you are just soaking up God's presence in your daily life and I pray that he is just speaking to you in in all the little things of your life what what I'm coming to understand now is it's not so much in the big things that God speaks it's in the little things um, today at my church um, uh, we had a guest preacher, and this preacher, um, what, um, gave an encouraging word to me, because, um, when you have 
been uh, preaching online and giving words to people online and it's not really catching, you're tempted to say, well, what's next, God? And I was talk I was talking to two people today and um, they said, I said, well, I don't know what God has um, planned for me. And one of them said um, something. And that was almost what God was speaking to me, but it wasn't quite confirmation. They said, well, why don't you do, why don't you pray about doing this? You've always wanted to do this. And it, like, it just didn't seem like the the timeliest word for me at the moment although i love this person and she's a woman of god and like um it was like god said no instead of doing that i want you to continue um doing your youtube videos and he's like don't worry who's watching because as you continue to do these videos, your ministry will open up. This is t a total tangent, by the way. Um, he said, as you continue to do this, your ministry will open up. Don't look at about starting a church right now or whatever, although eventually that's what I'm gonna have you do. Um, because you can speak to a populace of people that nobody is speaking to and there are things that that you can say that other people won't say or can't say because they can't speak to that and then this other person um, the preacher for today um, I said Lord that that seems almost right, but not quite right. Um, and out of nowhere, this preacher who I haven't seen in like uh, three, three or four years comes up to me and says, um, keep, he's, she's, I said, well, how are you, so-and-so? And this person said, I'm good, how are you? Um, and we started talking. And she said, Don't, she said, well, are you still writing or blogging or doing what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm still doing that. And she's like, keep doing it, keep going, because you never know who, whom it'll touch. And that was, all, that was confirmation as to what God was saying to me. Um, so that's the God moment that I had today. Totally not my sermon, but look for God in the little moments because it is often in the little moments and the moments that we think are insignificant that he reveals himself in the most powerful way. So anyway, back to my sermon, a flawless cross for, for a flawed, meant for a flawed people. Um, okay, so I got the song up now. Uh, I'm going to sing Flawless by Mercy, Mercy Me. There's got to be more than going back and forth from doing right to doing wrong cause, cause we're taught that's who we are. Oh, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody. Think, thinking there's more. Thinking there's worth in what you do. Then like a hero who, t who takes the stage when we're at the end of our seat saying it's too late. Well, let me introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, 
Still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. No matter the, no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made. The cross has made you fall less. Could it possibly be? We simply can't believe that this unconditional kind of love can be enough to Save a filthy rich life like this. Wrap her up in righteousness. But that's exactly what he did. No matter the... <laughs> no matter the bumps. No matter the bruises. No matter the scars. Still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. No matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain. Still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. Take a deep, take a deep, take a deep breath, smile. I'm like a hero who takes the stage barrier at the edge of my feet, saying it's too late. And let me introduce you to grace, grace, God's grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. No matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made. The cross has made you flawless. Uh, sorry guys, I goofed up on the words, but that's generally the song. Um, and I missed a part in the middle because I couldn't, couldn't get the tune right, so I skipped it. Anyway, um, so as I was listening to this song this morning, I was thinking how we're so flawed and we're so um, kind of um, undeserving of this cross. But despite all that, he just still came to die a brutal death and he just still loves us and his grace still covers us and I just began to think of this flawless Jesus who had no sin but he became sin and because of his sin we became righteousness and because of his sin we are now the righteousness of God he took on what we were supposed to have, all the sin that we were supposed to have, all the shame we were supposed to have, he took it on and it was solved at the cross and now all we have to do is work it out. But some of us, even as believers, we are still carrying this burden of shame and guilt and misunderstanding and unforgiveness and anger and all these issues around when he's saying I died for you 
I, a flawless God, came down in human flesh and took on those burdens. Those burdens are gone and all you have to do is receive my free gift and walk it out. And a lot of, a lot of Christians and non-Christians um, are punishing themselves for things they did in the past. Um, your, your flaws are a non-issue to God. He knows them. They're not a hindrance to him. We're the ones stopping ourselves from doing what God has called us to do. We are the ones who are saying, no, 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 that's, the, that's, that's too big for me, or this is too much for me, because we don't understand who we are. We, we can never fully understand who we are, but the person, not person, but the, um, but the God who understands who we are knows what he put in us and knows what we can handle and knows that we are not flawless. And you know something? He will use our flaws to his advantage. And because sometimes I say, oh my gosh, Lord, I struggle with this. I still love um, secular music or some stuff I'm not supposed to love. How can you use me? Um, or I still do what I'm not supposed to do. Sometimes I still cuss when I'm not supposed to cuss. How are you going to use me? He said, I'm using those things that you think are flaws to my advantage. He said, you're going to speak to people who only understand cuss words. You're going to speak to people who love music, but it's not gospel music, and you're going to bring me to them in that way. So the things that you think are flaws really are not because they're working towards your purpose. Um, Paul, Paul talks about the thorn in his flesh that he asked the Lord three times to get rid of it. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. So he would say that to us today with all your flaws and all the things you think are weaknesses. My grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And the areas that you think are weaknesses are really strengths in disguise. And he wants you to just go forward and in who he created you to, you to be. And if anything needs to be changed, anything needs to be adjusted, just be submitted to the Lord. And if you're submitted to the Lord and not stubborn, he'll take those away. He'll, he'll, he'll send you through a process of getting rid of those th things, whatever they are. And the things he can use, he will use to encourage people. He will use to inspire people. He will use to lead people to him. So, sometimes the things we see as witnesses, God is using them for his good. He's using them for his glory. He's using them for his purpose. And all we need to do is be submitted to his purpose and his righteousness. And we need to find our own rhythm with God. We need to learn how he speaks to us. Because what I'm learning now is um, because we are all children of God, um, I'm, I don't have children, but I do have nephews, and I can tell you, I have one nephew that is really talkative. 
he'll come up to you and talk to you hello and I have one nephew that is really quiet and I can't deal with my quiet nephew the same way I can deal with my talkative nephew they're different so I said all that to say um, that God doesn't deal with all his children the same so like so the key to finding out how God deals with you is relationship with God is is communication with God I think a lot of people think uh, this Christian thing comes in a formal while well, I read the scripture twice a day or I pray this time all oh, that's wonderful if you have to have a schedule to spend time with God because of the kind of person you are great do that but the most important thing is that you discover through time alone with God and the process with God how he speaks to you and how he alerts himself uh, alerts you of his presence in your life and it's and it's different for everybody God's word is different but but how he brings it forth um, to a certain person to this person or that person is very different and he also wants you to know that he loves you and you're covered you're covered no matter what you've done beloved no matter what hole you got yourself in and or if other people got your got you into a hole no matter what mistakes you made no matter where you are he loves you and he's just waiting for you to realize the depths of his love and really understand that you are loved and not really understand it intellectually but understand it spiritually because I think I think we often um, say oh yes God loves me but we don't really believe how much and if you don't really know how much ask him to show you and um, he wants you to know that his grace covers all and we often use grace as a oh his grace covers me I can do whatever I want but no Paul would say can grace abound so that sin may also abound bound? Um, and Paul said God forbid no no grace is not there so we can sin where we want grace is to remind us what God did so we don't sin we have that attitude you did all that for me so I'm going to do my best to make it make you proud Papa and if I fall you'll be there to catch me and I was also listening to covered today by Israel Holton and it is it is an amazing song and it talks about the grace of God it says I'm not gonna sing the whole song because I already messed up the first one but it says covered 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 by your grace oh Oh, covered, 
the bridge goes, No matter what I've done, no matter where I've been, no matter how I fall, you pick me up again. You have a new mindset. You take me as I am. You call me just a and I am covered by your grace. Oh, oh, oh. So I just want you to, my heart um, today is to let you know that you are covered and he loves you. And his love is not some wishy-washy kind of love that will um, be here today and gone tomorrow. His love will stand firm. His love will stand strong. And if you don't know the Lord, just ask him into your heart and i've said this before a lot of people say sinners prayers um pray with people to receive jesus into their lives um but i'm of the belief that he doesn't want to hear me that he wants you wants to hear your voice your cry your you're asking for him. I can pray for you, but I'm not praying for you. I'm praying that he will cover you and show you what you want to do, what steps you want to take. Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone out there, Lord God. I pray that your spirit will abide with them in this decision to accept you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that they will just be immersed in your glory, immersed in your grace, oh God. And I pray that forgiveness will be their portion, God. And I declare that you will just cause them to rise in the fullness of life that you have planned for them, Lord God. I declare that you are bringing them back into life, oh God, from death, from death, into your marvelous light, God. I speak to this generation, oh God, that is lost and dying without you, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you will raise them up to be a generation, God, that loves you. The world, the world and the church of this generation is lost without a hope. But I think they're lost without love. Lord God, I pray that you'll send mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and aunties and uncles to love on these lost people speak to grandmas right now speak to grandpas right now on how to raise those grandchildren god raise up a people that love you raise up a people full of grace and love and truth god i pray lord god that relevance will come back into the church. I declare, Lord God, that we'll sit, sit at governmental tables, God, to speak your word into this generation in a language that they all understand in the name of Jesus. And I, I thank you for your flawless cross meant for a flawed people, God. Thank you for your flawless cross, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for, send, for sending your son, God, to die for us, to restore us, to deliver us. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your peace, God. And thank you for your joy, despite every situation, God. I pray, Lord God, that, that, that you will just permeate our lives and show us who you are in the little things. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, guys, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.